Hello, so we are going to learn how to do substitution. Substitution is a much more uh, efficient way of solving systems of equations. We're still solving systems of equations. That means we are going to have an intersection between two lines. So that's all the same, just a different way to solve. So what is a solution to a system of equations? We're going to use substitution here and solve for our value. Okay, we have y equals 3x and x plus y equals negative 32. What we can do here is because we have a y equals in our first equation, we can replace the y in our second equation with 3x. So this becomes that same x, and now we're replacing y with 3x, and that equals negative 32, which means 4x equals negative 32. So we divide by 4, and x equals negative 8. However, of course, we're not done here. We're going to plug that value back into the beginning. right? And we already have our x coordinate. It's negative 8. And that means that y equals 3 times negative 8, which gives us negative 24. Now, we can obviously check this with our other equation by putting both the x and y value in, which gives us negative 8 plus negative 24 ends up equaling negative 32. And that works. So the answer, the intersection point of this system is going to be negative 8 comma negative 24. Okay, so for this one, they're both equal to y. So I want you to pause the video here, try to solve this one by yourself, and when you're done, come back and be ready for the solution. Okay, so uh, the correct answer is negative 8 comma negative 9. If you got that, great, move on. You don't have to listen to me. Uh, if you didn't, stick around for me to explain it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is because they're both y equals, right, which we normally could graph, and we can still do that, what we're going to do here is we are going to set these two equations equal to each other. I'm going to replace the y in my second equation with the y in my first, which means that 2x plus 7 is going to replace this y. So now I have 2x plus 7 equals x minus 1. And now this is an equa system, well, it's an equation with variables on both sides. So I can subtract both sides by x. I'm trying to solve for x. Therefore, x plus 7 equals negative 1, which means x equals negative 8. Remember, I subtract 7 on both sides, which this gives me my x value of negative 8. However, of course, we're not done. We have to plug negative 8 in to try to figure out the y value. So I'm going to use my second equation to do that, meaning y equals negative 8 minus 1, which equals negative 9. And just to double check that I got the equation correct, I'm going to plug it back into my top equation, because we can always check our answer by plugging both of these in. So I'm going to say is negative 9, and again, I'm just plugging this in to my top equation. I say is negative 9 equal to 2 times negative 8 plus 7. Well, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, plus 7 is equal to negative 9, and because negative 9 equals negative 9, we are good to go. So our final answer is indeed negative 8 comma negative 9. So a few ways for us to do any type of uh, system through substitution. Step one is to solve for an equation for a variable. Uh, we're either doing y equals x equals. As soon as we have that, we're able to substitute. Uh, once we substitute that in, we're solving for we're solving the equation, and then we plug back in our other variable to try to solve for the other variable. So say we got x is five, we have to plug that back into our equation to figure out what y equals. And once we have our y value we need to check our solution. So we're going to plug that ordered pair into whatever equation I didn't already use. So here's an example where we have it solved for x. And this is the exact same way we would do it with y, 
The only difference here is now we have an actual coefficient. So because it has x equals, I'm going to replace that x with 2y plus 7. I know it's a little bit tricky because we're, we're used to solving for y and going from there. But in this case, we're able to solve for x. Uh, well, it's already solved for us. So now I'm going to do 4 times the quantity. And again, this is just 2y plus 7. Right? I'm just replacing that x from my second equation with that 2y plus 7. And then plus 3y equals negative 5. So now in my first step, I need to be distributing that 4. So that becomes 4 times 2y, which is 8y, and 4 times 7, which is 28, plus 3y, because that's still there, equals negative 5. We've got to make sure we drop that all down. So I'm going to combine my like terms to get 11y plus 28 equals negative 5. And then I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides, which gives me negative 33 equals 11y. From there, I'm able to divide both sides by 11, which gives me y equals negative 3. So I know for my coordinate answer where the intersection point is, we know we our y value is negative 3. From here, I could plug negative 3 in for y on either equation. It's going to make sense to use my second equation, however, because that will give me an x value faster. And that second equation, all I'm doing is replacing y with negative 3. And then I just have to simplify and get x equals 1. But of course, we need to make sure that that works for both of our solutions, meaning we're going to have to plug that value in to our first equation because we already used the second equation. We've got to use the, the first one now to double check. So we're going to go 4 times 1 plus 3 times negative 3 equals negative 5. That means 4 minus 9 equals negative 5. And that's true. So our answer is 1 comma negative 3. Okay, I want you guys to try this one out on your own. Pause the video here. When you're done, come back and see the answer. All right, in this case, the answer is 4, 6. If you got that, great, move on. If not, stick around as I explain it. So again, this is an example where we have x equals. Um, so we're going to be replacing the x value now, and this time the second equation, with 2y minus 8. So we have 18 equals 3 times 2y minus 8. And then we have that plus y at the end. So again, I'm going to distribute. And I'm only distributing to the 2y minus 8. So 3 times 2y is 6y. And 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. I have plus y still at the end. And it still equals 18. And then from here, this gives us 7y minus 24 equals 18. And then I'm going to add 24 to both sides because it's a negative 24. So the additive inverse is a positive 24, which gives me 42 equals 7y. Lastly, I divide, giving me y equals 6. So now I know 6 is my y value. And again, it makes sense for us to plug that 6 into the first equation and not the second because it's going to be so much easier for me to solve. So x equals 2 times 6 minus 8, which is 12 minus 8, giving us x equals 4. But of course, we want to make sure we're right. So we plug it into that second equation once more just to double check that it works for both equations. So is 18 equal to 3 times 4 plus 6? Well, 3 times 4 is 12 plus 6. That is 18. So we're good to go. All right. Uh, last part. There are different types of solutions. We talked about this when it was equations with variables on both sides. In substitution, it's kind of the same thing. 
except now when we're talking about infinite solutions, we're still we're talking about an equation equaling itself, meaning 2 equals 2, or you're going to get 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus 5. Uh, if they equal different parts, then obviously we're dealing with no solutions. We're dealing with parallel lines. So here we're going to see how many solutions this has. And again, this is an x equals. The only difference here is that we have that decimal coefficient. So you could say our second equation isn't in standard form. We're still able to use substitution here and see what we end up getting. So I'm going to replace my x in my second equation with negative 2y plus 4, so it's 3.5 times the quantity negative 2y plus 4, and then plus 7y equals 14. Distributing that gives me a negative 7y, and that equals a plus 14, or a positive 14, and then plus 7y equals 14. We notice we have additive inverses in our y's, right? We have a positive 7y and a negative 7y, which ends up giving us 0y. So those two cancel each other out. They reduce down to 0. So 14 equals 14, which means this is going to be infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Okay, we have the 14 equals 14. That means that these lines are the exact same line. And if we were to graph them, they would overlap at every single point that they both share. So last time, pause the video, try this one out, see how you do. Okay, so you should have ended up with no solutions. If you got that, great, you're done with the video. Uh, if you didn't, one last time, I'll explain it for you. So this time it has a y equals, meaning we're going to replace the y in that first equation with the y in the second equation. So it's 3x minus 2 times the quantity, that is 3 halves, or essentially 1.5. You could have used that as well. And that equals, or 3 halves x plus 5 equals 12. I'm going to distribute that negative 2, which makes that a negative 3x, and then a minus 10. I still have that 3x out. On the front and that equals 12 my x's are going to cancel out right they're going to reduce down to zero x's which leaves me with negative 10 equals 12 and that can never happen which means that this is going to be no solutions right these two lines are parallel all right well thanks for watching and taking all the notes have a good day